background info. Be me. Single mom. Five-year-old son. Husband died three years ago. Crushed to death in a machine at work. Settlement money. Bought a Victorian house that was modified into a fourplex. Front of our house is our apartment. Sunroom up front. First tenant has to walk past our apartment to get to their apartment on the first floor. Walk past first tenant's door to back door. Back door of house leads to a stairwell. Door has been modified. Need to be buzzed in and out of stairwell, or have key, to prevent package theft. Those stairs give access to all apartments, but also the only way to top two apartments. I rent to these people, so I can work at home part-time to be there for my son. I have a great son. Smart, talkative, gentle, funny boy. Friends with everyone. Sometimes too friendly, even. I spoil him at Christmas and at birthdays. His grandpa on his dad's side comes disguised as Santa to visit every Christmas. Son loves the visits from Santa. Around December, talks about Santa all the time. This year, he started to talk about Mrs. Claus. Weird. Also hoped he would drop it so I didn't have to try to get a Mrs. Claus to come visit this year too. Son and I have a usual morning routine. Breakfast, bath, then I get him set up in sunroom to play for an hour or two while I work in the living room adjacent. This day, I can hear him talking a lot. Sounds like he's having a conversation. I go to check on him. Our goofy dog follows me into the sunroom, goes ape shit, runs to window barking and losing like he just saw the devil. That's not like the dog. Maybe a rabbit or something. Son says it was Mrs. Claus coming to visit. Okay, weirdo. And I go back to my work. Dog won't come with me, though. Dog won't leave Son's side. Two more times, I hear dog bark and go ballistic at the window. People walk by our sunroom all the time to get to the back, but he's used to it. Not sure why he's so upset. Then, I hear a loud crash. Son starts crying. Dog losing his shit. I rush in. Nobody is around the sunroom. Dog freaking out window. Son's freaking out, too, saying, Mrs. Claus threw a rock at dog. Mrs. Claus is mean, etc. I take my son to another room and try to figure out what, if anything, he saw. He said he couldn't tell me about Mrs. Claus because then the Christmas magic wouldn't work and Santa wouldn't come. He said some other things about her magic talking to him and offering him snacks and doing magic. Sounded like make pretend to me. Still call grandpa over to hang out with us for the rest of the day. He leaves that night. Dog wouldn't stop pacing around the house that night. Next morning, usual routine, but ask son to stay in living room with me. Dog in backyard playing. About 30 minutes later, go to get dog. Dog is dead. Foam coming out of mouth. Nothing wrong with him externally. Son is not okay. Vet said it would cost serious money to do labs and an autopsy to figure out why he died. He was seven years old and a large breed. Vet just said it's probably natural. Still tragic. Son and I go home heartbroken. Later that evening, son is hanging out and playing while I make dinner. Hear him giggle a little for the first time all day. Then, he goes silent. I run to go check on him and he's laying flat on the floor. Lips turning blue. Call 911. Go to hospital. Turns out, son had somehow got a huge dose of Benadryl and overdosed. CPS is called. Now CPS is coming round as if things weren't bad already. Childproof our house even more than it already is. Locks on the top of doors, medicine in the safe, etc. Hardcore childproofing. Also, won't leave son alone at all now. Start sleeping on the floor in his room. Hear his little voice talking late at night. Sounds like he's having an argument. I shoot up fast and I hear some banging noises. I see nobody. Again, he says he was talking to Mrs. Claus, starting to think it's a ghost. Go back to sleep. Next morning, I get a call from a tenant. Squirrel is trapped in the back staircase. Someone propped the door open and the animal got in. I chase it out, close the door, and hang a sign reminding everyone not to prop open doors. The whole time, I felt watched. Starting to think house is really haunted. Go inside and do our morning routine. While drinking my coffee, I start to feel weird. Blurred vision 
extreme fatigue, unsteady. I knock coffee mug over in my stupor. Spills. I notice some white powder at the bottom of the cup. I try to call grandpa. Drop phone. Back doorknob starts to turn. Door was unlocked. Only thing holding door shut was the child's safety lock at the top of the door. Son starts screaming and crying to let Mrs. Claus in. Grandpa shows up, and then the police show up shortly after, locked in the back staircase. Clawing at my back door like a rabid animal was a white-haired, toothless old woman. She was skinny and emaciated and smelled like shit, clearly homeless, but with white curly hair and wire-rimmed round glasses. In the bushes surrounding the outside of the house, police found empty bottles of Benadryl, a step stool, some blankets, cans of food, and tons of trash. This woman had been sleeping outside of my house, talking to my child, convincing him to do things, even throwing stuff over the fence for him or through open windows. She had convinced my son to dump a powder into my coffee that morning and convinced him to unlock the back door. She had been buzzed in mistakenly by a tenant and propped the door open for herself to come back later. She came back and hid. She probably watched me chase the squirrel around and hang the signs up. She had been tapping on windows trying to get my son's attention. When I tried to call Grandpa, the call went through before I dropped my phone. He heard the woman screaming. I don't even remember her yelling. He heard my son screaming too and rushed over. Called 911. I had to explain to my son that she was pretending to be Mrs. Claus, which made him realize that Santa as a whole is people pretending. This is the second worst Christmas we've ever had. This is kind of too small and short to really green text, but I had a friend in middle school who went missing, but the police in our town acted really cagey about it. Small town. Don't want to give the name out, but it's basically two neighborhoods. One is super rich and bougie. The other is dirt poor. Friend was going through a commie phase around the time that he went missing, and he showed up outside my window at night and was pecking at it to wake me up since my room was on the first floor. He told me how he found something big and how he was going to hitchhike to the nearest city and give it to the news. I told him that idea was stupid and that he shouldn't go. Next day, he didn't show up for school. Next day, there was a conference in the gym and they announced he was missing. After that, nothing. Not a peep. Not even on the news. I don't know what to make of it. Maybe he just got napped up by some pedo while he was out on the road, but... Shit gives me the creeps. Years back, Grandma lives alone. She starts using Amazon to order stuff. Around Christmas time, I warn her to be careful with her deliveries because a lot of people steal them. Casually mention that Amazon will never ask her to sign for stuff. A few days go by and there's a knock at her door. Big dude holding her Amazon package, telling her that she needs to sign for it. Grandma tells him to go away and leave her package by the door. The man proceeds to try and kick down the door, shoulder slamming it. Grandma keeps a gun on her, funnily enough, always has, and retrieves it, then fires through the door. Guy runs off, drops the package as he bolts. Grandma waits a bit, then brings the package inside and calls the cops. They never find the guy. Package turns out to be a Christmas present for me. After that, Dad insisted Grandma come live with us after that. She agrees. Still keeps a gun on her, though. And I got a Nintendo Switch. Crazy to think my grandma might have just been killed if I hadn't warned her. She thought you always had to sign for big packages. Hello, X. Recently had a pretty weird but short experience with my friends. Figured I might green text it because I never contribute anything. It's pretty short, and it might appear as something insignificant or explainable, but as for me and my friends, we really haven't figured out what happened, or why did it scare us so much. Hanging out in friend's house, just the three of us, decided we might go out and explore a new thing that just got built in my city. Not too far, probably a three kilometer walk, so completely doable, and the streets are calm, so it's going to be a chill walk. We're pretty used to these streets, we don't live in the outskirts or anything, so it's not like they are bare empty. 
We have to walk through this public park, which always has some broken lights. So you can see some parts and some you can't. Crossways with other people while walking through it because populated city. We get to this dark spot where, apparently, all lights surrounding it are broken, or they're just missing. Where we are, there is one of these structures for children that they can climb up to and pretend that they're in a boat. We stand there for a bit while a friend has a smoke. It's not completely silent as we can see car lights going through the street and hear them when they honk. Suddenly, we get this sort of eerie feeling and I look back quickly. Around four guys our age and size arrive. We can't see any details because of how light from other direction is reaching us. Can only see shadows. They don't say a word or make any noise. I look back once more as to confirm what I had seen, since I really didn't believe people had arrived. One of them started climbing up the structure and puts himself on the top. Stands there and doesn't say a word. Is looking straight. The rest of the guys that arrived start surrounding the structure. What in the dot JPEG? They just stand there. Not a single word. Noise. Anything. Let's get keep moving on. I tell my friends quickly. We start getting out of there fast. One of my friends gets really freaked out, and as we keep moving, he's looking back nonstop. They're following us, he says. I look back and I don't see anything. We cross the street and keep moving fast. My friend got really freaked out. He actually thought they were still following us and shit. We had to calm him down. It may not sound like a really spooky thing, but one of the guys I went with asked about this yesterday, and we all started talking about it, putting pieces into it, and trying to analyze what happened. The more we tried to make sense out of this, the weirder it gets. We aren't even sure that they were people. It wasn't even that late. It was around 9pm on a Thursday. How's that not late? We tend to go out a lot in the city in poor areas without anything like this ever happening to us. We might try and replicate this soon, to see what happens. I usually lurk on V and VR, but back in June, I started lurking here. Kept saying to myself I would post my own personal spooky encounter, but laziness got the best of me. But I'm waiting on a download, so might as well do it now. First time green texter, so bear with me. Be wagey cashier at a hunting supply shop. Old, probably late 40s, early 50s man comes in every Friday. Always chats with me at the register. I actually like talking with him because he reminds me of my own gramps. Also, actually plays video. Learned this when he was talking about his grandson. One day after my shift ends, I'm sat on a bench outside the store smoking when he comes up to me. Sits next to me. We start chatting about life shit. Actually want to stay in touch with this guy, so we exchange phone numbers. Start hanging out every few weekends. Just cracking a few beers back while he tells me hunting stories and shit. Blah blah, skip ahead a bit. Wake up in the middle of the night. Sixteen missed calls from him and he's calling me now. It's like 3am, but I accept it. Groaning, gurgling, and something I can only describe as someone who doesn't know how to whistle, trying to whistle on the other end. I assume he's just really drunk. Go to hang up before a voice that is absolutely not his whispers my name over the line. Shit bricks and frees up. It keeps repeating my name before bursting out into a hyena-like giggle. Hang up and can't get back to sleep. Thank God it's Friday.mp3. Next day at my job, he doesn't come in. Day after that, he doesn't come in. Getting, honestly, a little concerned about him. Third day, he finally comes in. He's slow, lethargic, and clearly hasn't slept since I last saw him in person. Hey, kid. Never called me kid before. Ask him immediately if something's wrong. He nods quietly. Tell him I'll talk with him after my shift. Once I'm out, I sit by the front with him. Ask him what that phone call was all about. What phone call? Ask him if he's shitting me. Just looks at me concerned. Whatever, that wave. Ask him why he looks so bad. Explains he got lost out in the woods and, during the time, he lost his phone and most of his hunting gear. He pauses for a second and looks at me with a very intense look. Anon, what day is it? I tell him the date. He just laughs and looks away. 
I went on that hunting trip last night. I was out in those woods all day. You're shitting me. Nope.mp3. Tell him earnestly I'm not bullshitting him. Tell him he should see a doctor because something's not right. He sighs and agrees and walks off. The end, really. The guy's still around, doing fine actually, but, but I don't see him at work as much because he stopped hunting and hiking altogether. I told him about the other voice on the phone later, but he had no clue what it could have been. Be me, DD-214 out of Air Force. Living with parents, have bedroom across from the front door. Bed is against the wall closest to the bedroom door, and the door is open. Aunt and uncle visiting, they are sleeping in the living room. Can't go to sleep, but still trying. Hear a knock at the front door. I wonder who it is that PNG. I hear a hello coming from the front door. Sounds like a kid, but as if somebody was playing the voice from a tape recorder. Nope, that wave. I'm going to stop green texting here and just explain what was happening. This kid keeps saying hello for a good minute, and I wonder why my aunt and uncle do not hear anything. Also, it was right around the time we were upgrading our security systems, so we did not have any recordings of the front door. My blood ran cold once I realized all the hellos sounded the same. There was no change in pitch or resonance. I used to be a radio dispatcher, so I could make out the most incoherent speech from a garbled garbage radio transmission at two in the morning. What bothered me was how I just froze, like primal fear seeped through me, as if I knew deep down this was not right. I thought, what the hell is going on? Why am I so fucking scared? I have weapons to defend myself and enough training to blast whatever is repeating itself at my front door. Well, at least that's what I thought. After a minute or two, it stopped. And after five minutes, I got out of bed and looked at my phone. It was 11 p.m. and there was no one at the front door. I could tell since I peeked out of my door and no one was standing on the porch, casting a shadow on the frosted glass door. I eventually calmed down and went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and asked my parents if my aunt and uncle heard anything while they were sleeping. My parents were confused why they would hear anything and asked what happened last night. I told them that as I was trying to sleep... It sounded as if someone was at the door with a tape recorder of a kid saying hello. My parents chalk it up to me hallucinating something as I was later diagnosed with PTSD after my friend committed suicide. I can't say that I was in the greatest state of mind, but even in my deepest moments of pain, never compared to the cold dread that I felt that night, hearing this kid repeat itself with no change in sound. The next day... Nothing happens, and we get a ring system. My dad constantly watches it and knows what's happening at the front door. And so far, no other things have come to say hello. I'll shoot my relatively boring story into the void here. Watched Close Encounters of the Third Kind for the first time recently. Get to the scene where the aliens cause all the toys in the little boy's room to turn on and go haywire. The creepy monkey, all the toy cars driving around the floor, etc. Memories flood back from my childhood when I was six. I used to have extremely vivid hallucinations while awake at night of similar things. Sometimes at night, it would be like my room turned into hell. Hundreds of different crazy things going on. Little demons and creatures and goblins running around, getting up to mischief. Demonic toy trains running around the floor the skin of a crocodile flying through the drawers, terrifying faces morphing from every surface. If I turned around in my bed, a two-dimensional creature would slide up between the bed and the wall. All creatures were fairly small, but the one human-sized one was a floating ghost that used the face of my sister. Somehow, I knew this was their leader. It would appear eventually, every time. It would face through a specific wall, the wall wasn't scary on its own, but I had the feeling that it lived in there. I can't remember what it said, but it berated me. Sometimes I thought I could faintly hear it in the daytime, too. One time I tried to escape the room, but the door handle broke off, as if it was made of candy cane. It's a weird metaphor, but that's how my brain labeled it for some reason. As I got older, this happened less and less, and eventually we moved. 
the movie really triggered the memory, seeing the chaos in that little boy's room. Maybe someone else has a similar experience, hallucinating a face-stealing ghost demon as a child. Sup, X? Have any of you guys from Central America had any paranormal experiences? My dad has one story he tells me, and I always get chills every time he tells it. Be dad, around 16. Be in Guatemalan City of Quetzaltenango. Mountain and fields were barely populated at the time, so it's completely fucking dark, like pitch black, back when the only thing you had to fear were ghosts instead of bandits and gang members. Dad goes to the mountain to go get Grandpa after a long day of tending the fields, walking on a dirt road in the dark with nothing but the moon shining. Get to a part where vegetation is heavy. Suddenly hears rustling in the nearby bushes as he walks by them. By then, my dad is on the verge of emptying his lunch into his pants. Suddenly, a black mass, as he recalls, comes out of the bushes and walks probably around five feet beside him. The thing is basically mumbling gibberish and keeps walking beside him. My dad at this point is terrified as shit and dares not to look at his side where the thing is following. The entity soon goes back to the direction it came from and goes back into the bushes. My dad just starts to book it and hopes to find my grandpa. What he worried the most was that another person might have given my grandpa a ride back to his house and he had to go back the same route he took where the entity came out of. Luckily, he heard the radio in the distance, a feeling of relief finally to him to see that he was walking down home. He tells him about it, and Grandpa says he's lucky that the spirit didn't want him. When a spirit wants someone, it just means that it kills them. A couple of days pass by, and he then sees a local newspaper article that says one of their friends that he knew was killed in the area where my dad was walking by. My dad was spooked out of his mind when he came to learn that this thing was his friend trying to talk to him via mumbles. Hey X, all Altest here. I recently had a strange experience deep in the back country in the islands of Vermont. Be me, retard who never grew out of playing in the woods. Have good social life, but suffer social burnout. And I like to kick back with a couple of beers or some liquor in the woods and have time to process my thoughts. Had a really stressful day at work, so I decide to go out for a little solo trip. Buddy drives me to an abandoned campground in North Hero, Vermont. Been abandoned for roughly a decade now. All that remains is a few fire pits and some clearings. The local cop occasionally drives by since it's a hotbed for local hooligans smoking reefer and touching butts. There's a ranger station that is only manned temporarily during the summer months for conservation purposes. We walk together for a good mile into the woods, and I set up my hammock. Pick related. And before one of you retards say it's too tight. I know. I loosened it before going to bed. Whip out the old bush axe and start cutting dead growth for firewood. Light a small fire. I brew some coffee and cook some rice and sausage. At this point, it was about six or seven. And I was starting to get late, so my buddy decides it's time to head back home since he works at 5 a.m. the following day thanks me for the coffee and the dinner, and hikes back to the car. Start getting cozy. I play a YouTube video and sit in my little foldable chair and sip from my hip flask. Fuck yeah, this is what camping's about. Warm fire, comfy sleeping arrangements, and nothing but my thoughts and the trees around me. Throw on some large pieces of dead wood and curl up in my sleeping bag, carried by a gentle breeze and the wind whispering between the trees. I drift to sleep. Wake up, eyes open. I can't move. Hear a feminine voice say, This is a nice spot you have here. How are you? I can't move my arms or legs. I speak, but my mouth doesn't move. What are you doing? This spot is occupied. Please leave me. Hear a nonchalant response. Okay. In the same voice. Can move again. Move out of hammock. And see there's nothing around. Figured I was sleeping, so I threw more logs on the fire, and I returned to sleep. 1 a.m. Starts raining. I stake my tarp and fall asleep like a baby. 3 a.m. rolls around, and I see what looks like a person at the foot of my hammock. Freak the fuck out and fall out of my hammock, my heart pounding as I say hello, and I get no response. I'm panicked. 
Something is really off, and my body knows it. I spend the remainder of the night awake in my hammock uneasy. I leave at sunrise, pack up my shit, and call my brother to pick me up. Was it my imagination, Anans, or do you think something visited me? I've camped many times, and I've never had this happen before. I was lying on my mattress when I heard people arguing on the sidewalk where I live. I took my pocket knife and went to observe between the gaps and the sliding gate. But there are just a couple of junky rockers that I often see around here. The girl was in a frenzy, threw herself on the ground, and told the fella to stay away from her. She was screaming that there were strange beings chasing her. The guy kept telling her to shut up, and there was a moment when I thought he was going to hit her. So I got ready to act at any moment. Fortunately, he was too cowardly for that. So, after a few minutes, she calmed down and they left. In the morning of the next day, I was talking to a friend in front of his house, and she was passing by. She came up to me and asked for a lighter. I said I didn't have it, and I noticed a little about her. And damn, she was terrible. Thin, with a red eye and etc. Obviously, she was going to be numb to something, so I said, Are you okay? And her response was, What does it matter to you? You saw me suffer yesterday and you did nothing. And went away. This left me disoriented for a while. That night, it was very dark and neither she nor the guy looked even once towards the gate where I was peeking. Be me, tripping on acid. Look at corner of ceiling. The geometry of the corner scares me. Immediately, I feel a bolt of panic in my toes. Goes up my spine and hits my chest. Feels like a fucking cannonball. Guys, help, I'm gonna die. I chill out eventually. Heart palpitations and minor psychosis ever since. What the fuck happened to me? I've got a weird one, but no good personal stories about it. Or nothing worth green texting, but in case anyone finds it interesting, I'll do a quick rundown. Grew up in small country town. Cousins and grandparents all lived in the same town, too. Grandparents' house had one room that we all knew was haunted. Anytime you spent the night there, you would wake up feeling like a cold hand was touching you. Happened to me a couple of times. After the second time, I refused to sleep there anymore. Same with my cousins. They all claimed the same thing happened to them. All of us agreed that it felt like a cold hand with long fingers. Weird coincidence? My grandparents both died in that room. Grandpa had a heart attack in there one day. Grandma died in her sleep in there. Nobody is sure why she was sleeping in that room instead of her own, but that's where my parents found her. After Grandma died, we held a wake in that house. A few of us spent the night, and cousins and I decided to sleep in the haunted room together that night. To be honest, I have no idea why we did that. None of us felt the cold hand, except one older cousin who said he felt it touching his arm. He has had pains in that arm ever since. That's pretty much it. We sold that house after my grandma died. I moved away. Not sure if the owners have had anything happen to them. Be a weekish ago. In my grandma's basement. A lot of paranormal stories from this house. In the basement trying to get printer hooked up. Grab a beer from the fridge down there. Psh, that wave. Two minutes after I crack it, I hear the exact same psh in the same spot at the same volume. Looked around, actually thought someone was with me. Intrigued, but not creeped out. Wondering if it was a glitch in the maintenance. I think that's supposed to be Matrix. A glitch in the maintenance. This happened in a version of X on a Brazilian image board. And Anon creates a thread. He talks about encounters and rituals involving a sect. It updated almost every day. In one of these updates, he makes a list of participants. Most are politicians, but there is a reasonably well-known writer and also some less relevant actors. He exposed that many of these politicians use fake names. On that list, there were even two politicians who had officially, quote-unquote, died. As he accumulated more information, people diverged in opinion. It continued like this until he exposed the exact location where one of these encounters would take place. 
I saw the location on Google Maps. It was a simple building next to a social service agency. He was completely taken with the idea of going there. He tries to convince people to go with him, but most people ignore it, and some make fun of it. So he decides to go alone, posted that as soon as he returns, he would share the photos and other information. After that, he never appeared to post anything again. I don't know if it was a LARP or something, but the guy lived for this, and he was obsessed with this type of theme. The whole ex practically died after it disappeared. All right, gather around, everybody, gather around. It's time for a good old-fashioned ghost story. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. The tale of how my friend who killed herself seven years ago was in my car today. Our tale begins during one of my nightly lucid nightmares where I feel emotions that don't even exist in waking consciousness. Every night. Every night this happens to me. I haven't had a dream about puppies and kittens since I was five. And even then, sometimes the puppies were chopped up. The setting. I'm driving my car down the highway in 1940s New Jersey. Which is already weird because we're riding around in my 2019 Hyundai. And nobody seems to notice or care. Who's in my passenger seat? My friend, Alyssa. Well, that's nice, isn't it? No, it isn't. Because Alyssa has been dead for seven years. She died in 2015 via putting a gun in her mouth. The aftermath was... Yeah. Yet, here she is. In my car. Looking perfectly normal. Alright, maybe this dream will actually be kind of nice. Alyssa suddenly turns to me and asks if she can drive. I'm like, sure. I let Alyssa drive us around tons of times. And so we do a Chinese fire drill and she takes the wheel. And then she immediately slams on the gas and crashes the car into the guardrail, sending us both flying through the windshield. When we hit the ground, I turn to her and I scream, why did you do that? Why did you just crash the car on purpose? All of a sudden, Alyssa's face changes to the way it was after she pulled the trigger, half her head blown off, one eyeball hanging from its socket, brain matter and blood dripping everywhere. She asks me only one question in return. Why did you let me die? And there it is. The dream may have continued on some after that, but that's where my memory of it stops. Of course, I'm used to this sort of thing. What I'm not used to, however, is when dreams carry over to the waking world. Fast forward to me driving to the store today in present time, New Jersey. I get there without incident, get my stuff, head back in the car, and drive on my way back home until I hear the noise. Ding, ding, ding. What the fuck? It dings again. Oh, God damn it! What is the damn car's computer problem now? This thing fucking sucks. I check and make sure all the doors are all the way closed. Gas cap is on tight. My seat belt is on. The tank is over half full. Things are going off for no reason again. So, I drive off getting more and more irritated by the minute at the goddamn dinging to the point where I'm cranking the volume on my stereo all the way up just so I don't have to hear it until my eyes finally lay upon a blinking light indicating what the dinging sound is. Passenger's seat belt is unbuckled. There is no one in the passenger seat. Of course, this is what causes me to flash back to the dream and that damn dinging sound continued the entire way home. I spent the entire car ride, a captive audience to my own thought spiral. By the time I had pulled into my driveway, I had come to the conclusion that all of my friends' suicides, yes, there are more than one, if I wanted to have a high school reunion, I would need a shovel. They were because of a satanic ritual I found on GeoCities and performed when I was 14 years old. The car is haunted now. Great, now I got that to worry about. Be me. Around 18 or 19, living with girlfriend. First house I ever rented by myself. Feels good, man. Dick around in graveyards a lot at the time because, haha, ghosts are fun. In bed one night. Girlfriend gets up to let dog out to pee. Probably like 3 a.m. or so. She gets out of bed. Hear her open front door. Front door closes. Alright, she's safe. Doze off. Wake back up. Hear bedroom doorknob turn slowly. Shaft of light 
goes across room. Door is open probably three or four inches. Stays like that maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Slowly shuts again. Knob resets. Hey, wait a minute. Roll over. Girlfriend is in bed with me. Fear of God in her eyes. Tearfully. Uh, Anon? Quick. Lizard brain math. Who was phoned at JPEG? Action roll off of bed. Grab brake barrel shotgun from underneath bed. Immediately train it on the bedroom door and tell girlfriend to get in the farthest corner and to call police and then my parents who lived close by. Cops around here suck. Standing with a shotgun at the door in my underwear. I only have one shot. If I hear anything touch this door, I'm blowing a hole in it. Dead silence. Girlfriend silently having panic attack in corner. Dad arrives, strapped. Clears yard. Let him in. Hands me Beretta. He uses a 12 gauge with more than one shot. Clear the house with dad. Dad is a legend. House is empty. Cops arrive. No sign of entry or exit. Would doubt myself to this day thinking I had dreamt the door thing. If girlfriend didn't see it too. AC was off. Doors and windows were shut and locked. So no drafts. Girlfriend leaves me not long after. Had left her home alone for a weekend. Wonder still if more spook shit happened and she just couldn't. Probably was just a shitty guy. Could be spooks though. She had massive titties. Double E's to be exact. My face when? A ghost ran my big titty girlfriend away. Tried to make that vaguely funny, but I promise you Anons, that happened. Anticlimactic, not super crazy, but it happened. Never felt more fear than seeing her in bed staring at me with that look of absolute terror. I don't let women go outside alone at night anymore. What happened to you in the house? Did you need to move elsewhere after the breakup? Yeah, I got some roommates and peaced out. It was a weird, too small of a house. Whole thing was a rectangle, where roughly half was the kitchen separated by a counter to the living room. A small bathroom with a tub and shower. Then the other half was the bedroom. I point that out because other than the sound of the knob turning, the door creaking open, and then the door being closed back, I didn't hear shit. And there just wasn't anywhere for an intruder to have gone. Front door was dead bolted. Back door was in the bedroom and was never unattended. I also recall when I would be in the bathroom while home alone. It would often sound like someone in boots walking around inside. I also saw a bottle look like it was slapped off the edge of the tub and onto the floor while I was on the toilet. None of that phased me though. It was definitely the, wait my girlfriend is still in bed with me, that stuck with me. Be me. Be a janitor at my local mall by day. Be a necromancer by night. Study necromancy in secret for years. Basically, my job consists of driving around Zamboni and mopping restrooms at the mall. At home, I read dark magic books in PDF and post on X and practice the dark arts. One day, found a dead fetus in one of the toilets at the mall. Blood everywhere. Seems that someone did not want to have a baby or something. Fetus is maybe four or five months old. Clean the room. Place the lifeless fetus inside a black plastic bag. Go home. Practice some spells on it. Nothing. Decide to implant a lost soul into it. Somehow, I created an imp. Ugly looking, but doesn't attack me. The imp looks hungry. Lock it in the basement. Imp feeds on rats and mice for the first nights. Hide the imp inside a metal toolbox. Get a side gig as an exterminator. Co-worker mentioned rats in her attic. Go to her house and let the toolbox with the imp overnight. Her rat problem got resolved. Place my imp back in the toolbox. Left the toolbox in the back of my truck. Stop to refuel at a gas station. Go inside and wait in line to pay for gas. When I came back, realize someone stole my toolbox. My face when someone out there has my rat eating imp. I have one that happened to be in my old house that was haunted as fuck. Moved from LA to shit town in the middle of bumfucked Egypt, West Virginia. Family wanted a quote unquote new start. Needed to get out of the city. Brother was a junkie. Sister was dating a friend. Dad moved us all to his birthplace. Used to living in tiny apartment building with tons of other people. Now live in a giant fucking mansion, five bedroom house with two floors, a full attic, and a furnished basement. Only 650 a month for rent, compared to 1900 rent for three bedroom apartment 
and Los Angeles. House was built in fucking 1486, when corn friends still roamed the earth. Stories of Indian burial grounds all over the place. Civil War fights. Thomas Jefferson fucked a slave in my backyard. A lot of history, basically. One night on the internet, YouTube wasn't even a thing yet, had to get content on shit sites like E-Bombs were out of Newgrounds, AOL forums, and chats. In a particularly good AOL chat room, talking about MMOs like EverQuest, an upcoming Blizzard MMO, World of Warcraft. Constantly hearing footsteps in the hallway, upstairs outside my room. Probably my brother walking around with the shakes going through withdrawal. This goes on for weeks and weeks. The footsteps always start at the same time, around 2 a.m. and last until 2.45 a.m. Finally get up the courage to look out the door. Sounds like someone's coming up the steps. Look over the railing. Nothing. No person. Can still hear stairs creaking, like a heavy person walking up them. Dart back in my room and close the door. Don't go to sleep until the sun comes up. Two weeks later, more footsteps. Don't want to look, but insanely curious. Peek head out of room through a crack in the door. Can still hear the footsteps. Spot the featureless gray silhouette of a woman going into the bathroom at the end of the hallway. Shit my pants and stay up until the sun comes out. No one believed me. Be me. Be five years old. It's 2007, and mom is taking me to the mall. Ride around in car following mom. Notice a woman standing in the same location for about ten minutes. All of a sudden, hear shouting. Woman sees her kid come out of the toilet with a shaved head and ripped clothing. Everyone gets evaluated from mall. News never follows up on story. I took leave of my father's decrepit farmhouse and my modest Guatemalan automobile, making reasonable pace across a landscape bereft of anything resembling what I had come to know as modernity. I eventually reached a general store, a flimsy wooden structure that emitted a dark cloud of smoke from a narrow chimney. Two locals sat outside in the midday sun, accomplishing nothing and seemingly content in their doing so. Their bestial stupidity, likely the result of generations of inbreeding and race mixing, was apparent in both their appearance and vocabulary. My eyes were immediately drawn towards the words emblazoned above the door. These words perplexed me in such a manner that defy ordinary description. I shall not repeat them here, for I fear that anyone who stumbles upon this tome will meet the same fate as I, should they read them. I have not slept in weeks, as I have tried in increasing desperation to decipher the true meaning of that inscription. I fear that it is pointless. The fate of this city slicker is sealed. I don't know if a lot of you guys are this shit posty, but the punchline is that it's, uh, Sneed. Sneed's feed and seed, formerly Chuck's. That's, um, yeah, I hate that I kind of understood that. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. It's very, very unlikely that I'm wrong because this is exactly the type of shit you would, you would see. <laughs>